there guys, my name is Sarah Nicole Nadler. Welcome back to my show. In this episode, I wanna to talk to you about super glue. I know that's a funny subject for a business owner, right? But what does super glue do? Well, we use super glue to stick two things together. And in this case, I'm talking about sticking two people together, meaning melding your business and your love life. <laughs> Getting you and your partner on the same page despite the fact that you have an entire business to run. Now, here's the thing, right? When I was, gosh, I think about 12 years old, I tell this story in my book, Get Married, Stay Married. I think I was about 12 years old, my mom bought our first piece of Ikea furniture. And I watched her carefully put everything together without using the little instruction book that had come with it, right? I was very impressed. And at the end, this bookshelf was completely wobbly. We started putting books on it and it just was wobbling all over the place. And finally, I held up the bottle of super glue and I said, mom, I think this might have had something to do with it. Sure enough, come to find out you were supposed to super glue the little pegs into the holes so that it would have some structure and some stability to it. So you might be wondering, what does this have to do with business? What does this have to do with marriage? Well, guess what? Marriage and business both have the same super secret ingredient and it's super glue, right? It is the thing that sticks people together. The thing that sticks people together, the super glue for your business, the super glue for your marriage, and the way you can meld the two is called a moral code. Now let's define a moral code. A moral code is a written, formal, and consistent, that's key, set of rules describing good behavior accepted by a person or by a group of people. So we have to both agree on the same rules, the same written, formal, and consistent. Whether it's written or not, it has to be consistent for both people. If I'm not allowed to do this, you aren't either, right? That is a moral code. Guess what the traditional moral code was way back when? Your wedding vows. These days, people spend less time planning their wedding vows than they do buying their dress or choosing a venue. Believe me, I've done plenty of wedding planning over the years as a minister. Nobody actually pays any attention these days to their wedding vows, but they are the most important ingredient. They are the super glue that's gonna keep your marriage together. In a business, we call this protocols, right? We call these policies, things that are written and consistent for each individual employee. So I have a couple of suggestions that I want to run by you. This is the general staff disciplines. These are the, the moral code that you and all of your team need to actually come to the same page about and be consistent in applying these principles to each of your employees because you're gonna find your group coming together like super glue is holding them together. Okay, and when you have your business in that condition where everybody is on the same page and working together as a team, your marriage will now have time, right? You will have time to actually spend with that spouse of yours and if necessary, iron out the things that have been keeping you apart. So rule number one that I want you to consider putting into written moral code for your business. One, right? Always contribute to an atmosphere of warmth, friendliness, cheerfulness, caring, and competence. Imagine if that was a written policy, a written procedure in your business that you could write people up if they violated, right? You could go up those gradients of moving towards dismissing the person if they are not willing to demonstrate this level of professionalism in your business, right? No matter whether they're a technician, they are a plumber, they are a beautician, any employee that you have, whether they're technical or administrative, they should be willing to agree to this if they're going to be a part of your business, right? And of course, it also applies to you as a business owner. Unfortunately, what, you know, tit for tat, what applies to them should apply to you. Step two, consistently conduct yourself in a manner befitting a professional person. Three, through attitudes and actions, work to affect smooth daily operations, anticipate problems before they begin, and work with appropriate individuals to resolve problems early. Imagine if all of your employees had that expectation set on them. 
how much smoother would business become, right? So I want you to pause this video for a second and really sit down and think about the last five or 10 problems that came on your plate as a business owner. Is there some violation of just these first three, these three different points of a moral code? Was there a violation of those in that last problem that landed on your plate? I'm not gonna be surprised if you say yes, because these are fundamental. They are the super glue that's going to hold your bookshelf in place, okay? Whether it's built at Ikea or not, we all need that structure, and it's going to make your wedding, your business, your marriage, your children, and even your own life so much stronger and more stable, okay? So I want you to think about what moral codes you need to put into place for your business and if necessary, also for your marriage. I'll talk to you guys soon. Bye.